What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So today I wanna to do a video on um, a couple things. It's really pulling the slack out, which I've talked about in the past, but I don't think that video did it justice. And then also um, a cue that I use, especially for sumo pullers, which is scooping the hips. Um, and and it's, these two kind of go hand in hand. I'm gonna explain what all that means in a second if you don't know. But I'm gonna teach you how to do those two things. And what this does is it's actually gonna solve a few problems. One is force transfer issues. A lot of the time when you see people deadlifting, they miss a rep because they don't get a smooth transition of force from their body into the ground as they lift that bar up. Especially in the deadlift, you'll see this, where people yank on the bar and they start shaking mid-rep and their body gets pulled out of position and they miss the lift. The other thing this does is it, it um, kind of helps solve an issue that I see where people drop their hips too low in a deadlift. You only, I have a video on this, so if you want to understand that a little bit more, go ahead and watch it. I'll link it down in the description box. But a, a, a big way of defeating that is actually doing what I'm about to talk about because it just pulls out the thinking out of it. You don't have to know where your hips need to be. It'll just click into place. So I'm going to show a sumo deadlift today because that's what I have programmed. Mind you, I pull very narrow in my sumo. This has to do with my anatomy. I get very bad pain if I go too wide uh, in, into adduction or abduction. Just mind you, most people are gonna pull like this. However, it will entail actually a more forward knee position and it's actually harder to do what I'm trying to show you on camera. Um, so this is like an extreme example. And if I can get my hips to scoop like this and I can set the bar and pull the slack out this way, I guarantee you can, especially with the wider stance. This does apply to conventional deadlifts as well, but I'd say it applies even more to sumo deadlifts. So I'm gonna get up on the bar and we're gonna talk about what I mean. So the first thing, when we talk about pulling out the slack, I'm gonna do this on a deadlift bar. All that means is yanking up on this extra bit of slack on the bar. So that way when I go to yank, I don't hit like a dead stop, like a dead wall, where um, it's kind of as if I had like a giant object in front of me, like a big cinder block or something, and I had to push it 10 feet. I wouldn't want to run full force at that. I want to get up onto it first and transition a little tension into it and then start pushing. If you run at it full force, you're going to hit that wall and it's not going to feel too good. Same thing with the deadlift. When we yank up, we go from that dead space into hitting that wall and it pulls us out of position. So to get that smooth transfer of force, I want to get that slap down. Now, most people think they're getting the slack out, but they're not. I'm using a deadlift bar, which will over-exaggerate how much slack I can pull out because it's more bendy. But watch this, go ahead and film close on the bar. So I get set into my position. From there, I bend down to the bar, grip. And what I do to really get the slack out is I pull up on the bar and do a hip shoot. So I, I receive my knees and kind of stretch my hamstrings out. And then from there, I'm gonna set back into position. And what that lets me do is it lets me kind of act, uh, use my body as like a deadlift jack. I lean back with that weight and kind of tension it into my body. And if I were to let go of this, I'd fall back a little bit. Now there is such thing as leaning back too much, but the idea is to really like leverage the weight into your system. If you don't do this, you might pick up that slack, but then as soon as you start, you lose it. You have to kind of lean back with that slack. So I get up on the bar, Get into position, brace, slack out, and I set back, okay? And you can see that bar already wanted to budge up. Now that wasn't even how hard I normally pull out the slack. I'm gonna do it in real time now, and I'm gonna have her film from the side, and you're gonna see as soon as I set my hips, the weight actually starts budging up off the floor. And the reason why that is, is because I'm literally leaning back with that weight, and it lets the, the um, force get transferred the second my hips are into position. Now, if you don't do this enough, this won't happen, but that's kind of how I beat that, like setting my hips too low. A lot of people don't know where to put their butt in space. If you pull the slack out, the second that butt starts coming back down from that hip shoot, the bar's gonna start moving right when your hips are in the perfect position. So go ahead and watch this. That's what pulling the slack out. Looks like I'm out of breath. Three reps to me is cardio. Okay, I had to take off my hoodie. That was like super hard for me to do those three reps and, and actually keep my breath. So that was the pulling the slack out. Now, what you'd notice if you watch that video from the side again, my hips always scoop under and forward. What I'm trying to do when I lean back and leverage that weight, that slack into my system, I'm trying to also aggressively jam my feet into the ground and squeeze my glutes. A lot of people talk about using their glutes in their deadlift. Now. The reason why these go hand in hand 
is because when you pull the slack out, it makes it a lot easier to actually use your glutes because you can tension the legs into the ground. You lean back with that weight and then start transitioning leg force into the ground to budge the weight off the floor. When people don't pull the slack out, oftentimes they yank up on the bar and that causes them to use way too much back. They lose position and the glutes are now in a bad position to be able to squeeze through. So when we pull that slack out, it allows us to, to really utilize the glutes. And so something I see a lot of sumo pullers fail um, fail with is, is actually finishing the lift with their hips. What we want to do in a sumo deadlift is basically get the hips to the bar as quick as possible. And so the seconds I'm budging that weight up off the floor, I'm thinking hips underneath my shoulders. I'm trying to scoop them underneath me. And so this all kind of, it's, it's a weird theoretical thing, but it's, it all ties in together. I pull that slack out of the bar, then I start setting my hips again, the weight starts budging up off the floor, and then I scoop the hips under me, and it's all one continuous motion. So I'm gonna show it again. Watch my glutes, watch my butt. Get up on the bar. That's what we're looking for. We're trying to get these glutes to that bar quickly. I'm going to show my girlfriend doing this. She's really good at this too. Uh, but yeah, they go hand in hand. Now, it is worth noting not everyone is stronger pulling the slack out, but it's a more consistent way of, of getting the reps done. I'm stronger this way. Some people can really yank up on a deadlift, be totally fine doing that. I'm not one of them. So I'm not saying this is the best way to deadlift, but I think it's the best way to get proper tension uh, to grow your, your body if you are a bodybuilder. I don't think you should be yanking your deadlifts. And you'll get the most consistent reps. I'm basically done talking, I'm out of breath. I'm gonna film my girlfriend now and she'll show you. Slack's gonna come out, and then she scoops the hips under. Slack out, boom. Hips just scoop right under. The butt never shoots up too much. Hips scooping. That's how you use your glutes in the deadlift.